Russo. I am the chairman of the Berwick Planning Board and just here to talk about some planning board stuff with you. I'm also a longtime resident, a 11 year real estate agent, so I know a little bit about the goings on around town. Um, so I've gotten a lot of questions lately about what is the scope of the planning board? What what can the planning board do or what kind of conditions can a planning can the planning board uh, put on an application? So I kind of wanted to just go through an example of uh, a, like a real world example, a fake world example of uh, what happens. So we're going to take Joe. Joe lives in the R2 zone or Joe owns a piece of property. I'm sure Terry's going to want to scan this. Um, <laughs> Joe owns a lot in the R2 zone. It's 0.459 acres. He found out it was in the R2 zone because he looked on the zoning map. That was a pause for the zoning map. <laughs> so Joe says, I want to put in a neighborhood convenience star, store in the R2 zone. Now the R2 zone is a transitional zone. R1 is the downtown and kind of high density zone. That's where we want to concentrate the majority of the people in town because that's where the town services are located that's where the downtown is going to be located our two is the rural agricultural zone so that's where we keep the lot sizes bigger the setbacks bigger but our two is that transitional zone so the first thing Joe does is he goes to our land use table and finds the neighborhood convenience store and sees that it is a conditional use in the R2 zone excellent a conditional use that means that he has to come to the town planner and get on the agenda for the planning board and prepare an application. The next thing that Joe would want to do is look at the definitions. So every use that we have, um, God willing, is defined in our land use ordinance. And we still find little things that aren't. So if you find a definition that isn't there, let us know. But neighborhood convenience store is in our land use ordinance. And it is defined as a store of less than 1,500 square feet of floor space intended to service the convenience of a residential neighborhood with such items not limited to basic food, newspapers, emergency home repair articles, and other household items. So perfectly plausible. And you know, you could be Joe or Joe could be your neighbor living in the R2 zone right now, getting ready to open a neighborhood convenience store. Um, so this is something to keep in mind. Anything that says conditional use, um, would be approved. So the next thing Joe says is, okay, I need to make sure I need to go to the dimensional requirements table, which is on page 39 of our land use ordinance, looks in the R2 column to make sure that he has, he meets all the dimensional requirements for a buildable lot. And he does. So he has, um, his lot is 0.459 acres, which is 20,000 square feet. He's on public water and sewer. If he did not have public water and sewer, he would need 60,000 square feet, which is about an acre and a half. Um, his lot is 150 feet wide, which is the minimum. And then I um, indicated the setbacks here. So 50 feet from the front of the road, 25 feet side setback, 25 foot rear setback, and that would create his building envelope. So Joe could build and develop anywhere within those setbacks, that envelope. Um, he's got everything that he needs, and then the maximum building height for that zone is 35 feet. Good, Joe. So Joe goes to the town planner. They um, fill out the application together. We sit down as a board, and we have an application meeting. And in the application meeting, we go over the performance standards for a conditional use permit. So this is a, a fairly detailed process where you'll see it's on page 56 of our land use ordinance. It goes through all of these performance standards, including but not limited to buffers, um, the glare of lights, landscaping, parking, noise, air emissions, uh, the availability of water and sewer, uh, how, how um, trash is gonna be disposed of, who's gonna work there, when are they gonna work there, what are the hours, um, you know, how, many, how many parking spaces are required, the signage. So <clears throat> once Joe comes to the meeting, we give him an idea of what the planning board might be looking for. So if this was, if this was a real uh, convenience store going into the R2 zone, so think of um, Cranberry Meadow Road. Uh, somebody wants to put a convenience store on there. 
or turn or turn a house into a convenience store. We would be thinking about um, definitely the the glare of lights because we want to make sure the abutters are protected. We want to make sure that there's ample buffer and that is in our performance standards. We want to talk about hours of operation, get a letter from police, get a letter from fire, and those are all um, little things we would talk about. So then we would set a site walk where we would all go out to the site to take a look at it and see if there's anything else that comes up that we think might be an issue. And then we would also have a public hearing at the next meeting. The public hearing is when the abutters are noticed. So if you are an abutter within 200 feet of that property, you will get a letter in the mail. And I don't think we're doing certified. I think we're just sending it regular mail. Um, and then you would be invited to come to the hearing. At the public hearing, you have an opportunity to stand up and state, um, you know, state any questions or uh, concerns or whatever. Um, the public hearing is not a back and forth, so we have every member of the public come up, state what they need to state, we take all the notes, they sit down, we close the public hearing, and then the developer and the planning board discuss what was brought up, and then we just add more conditions as needed to the, um, to the application. And then the next meet, usually at that meeting or the next meeting, Joe would get final approval. And so um, in the end, we have Average Joe's convenience store. And you can see that he built within his setback. He has his 1,500 square feet of space. He has 11 parking spaces, but only 10 are required. Um, there, this is the buffer on the sides from the neighbors because that was a requirement. And then here are some conditions that the planning board may put on additional conditions. And conditions can be anything from, I mean, conditions can be anything from, you know, we don't want your trash stored outside to the hours of operation can only be between here and there. I mean, it, they have to be within reason, but the planning board pretty much has a, a broad scope of what conditions they can put on it. So if it scares you to think that there could be a neighborhood convenience store next to you on Cranberry Meadow Road, um, there are ways that we can change the land use ordinance, we can make amendments. and so. One of the things I know a lot of people have asked about, oh, how do we change this? How do we stop this? How do we do this? How you do that is you come to the planning board or come to the town planner and ask to be on the agenda. Come state your, um, you know, present your proposal. The more detailed you are, um, the less angry you are. Usually the better it's received. The more educated you are and, um, you know, the more evidence you have, the better it's received. Or if you see something that's done in another town that we can recreate, again, better it's received. The, te um, the planning board then deliberates about it. We have Southern Maine Planning and Development at our fingertips, so that's all professional planners. So we will often ask for um, them to weigh in on things, the town attorney if we think it might be a slippery slope, and then we vote on whether we think that we should amend the land use ordinance. The next step is that we send it to the select board. The select board then votes on whether they're going to send it to the town, and then the town votes on it. So it's quite a quite an ordeal. It usually takes about a, a year to change a land use ordinance uh, because we vote twice a year and there's a whole process uh, that goes with that. But um, that's that. So that's the scope of the planning board. The planning board can't deny an application if it is a use that is approved in a zone, period, end of sentence. So if there's uses in zones that you don't think should be there, by all means, um, we want to hear from you. We want you to come to the board. We want you to express your opinions. We want to serve the people of Berwick as best we can. If you have any questions um, about the, the land use ordinance, ordinance, about planning, about real estate in general in town, um, about anything with the downtown development, please send me an email. My email address is right here. <laughs> by the power of TV. <laughs> uh, please send me an email. I, I respond almost immediately to all emails. I'm very responsive and I'm happy to help out. Mm -hmm.